example, our cold crops are coming along pretty good now. Despite the cold, wet weather, they're starting to respond now. But that also means there's an insect pest that's going to be responding pretty quickly too. So you want to be on the lookout for either the imported cabbage worm or the cabbage looper. Now there are two different types of insects, but they both have the end result, and that's feeding on the foliage and sometimes on the end produce, which might be a head of cabbage, etc. Now the cabbage looper is a light green colored larva as far as the caterpillar itself but it has a tendency when it crawls it loops and that's how it gets its name it kind of has a hunchback as it goes across it has a little bit lighter greenish white or yellow stripes on it and the adult moth to that particular looper is a brown color now the imported cabbage worm doesn't loop it's pretty much straight it's not as long as far as the larva and it's a little bit darker green and it doesn't really have any stripes to it but the adult is a lot more noticeable in that it's a whitish color with a yellow uh, tinge maybe to the leaves and it's very colorful when it flies around. So you want to be on the lookout for both of the adult or the larva, but the larva is the one that does most of the damage. Now there are several controls. Obviously you can go along and you have to look under the foliage on your cold crops like broccoli, cabbage, Brussels sprouts, etc. and look for the larva and you can hand pick them or smash them. But once you start seeing the adults, uh, there can be anywhere from two to three generations for the growing season, and that means in no time it can get out of hand and they can really do a lot of damage and affect your yield. So in addition to hand picking, we've got an organic type of insecticide that we've talked about often on the show called Bt or Bacillus thuringiensis. Now the thing that you need to remember, there's several strains of Bt, so make sure you purchase the right one and it's the variety Kerstocki or Berlinger. And you need to look on the label to find out which type of cultivar you have. This particular one is Berlinger variety Kerstocki, so we're, no, we're in good shape. The other thing that makes it confusing sometimes is it comes in different formulations. This is a dust. You don't want to mix it with water. You just sprinkle it on. It also comes in a wettable powder that you can then mix with water and spray on or a liquid that you mix up with water that you spray on. So again, good products that are naturally occurring bacteria that we've been able to formulate as an insecticide. Now the problem is the way it works. It takes a few days sometimes for it to kick in because a caterpillar has to either crawl across it or chew on it and it basically makes them sick to their stomach and they quit eating and eventually die. But sometimes a product, after it's sprayed on, depending on the weather, may only last anywhere from two to four days. So about 1991, we aired a segment where USDA researchers had shown that mixing sugar and starch at a 1% solution actually caused the Bt to remain on the plants a little bit longer. Again, depending on the weather, maybe as much as 19 days. So the formula for that would be to mix two to two and a half tablespoons of sugar to a gallon of your mix and two and, two and a half uh, tablespoons of your starch to a gallon of your mix. Now before you just dump it in the entire mix, I encourage you to take a little bit of water out of your gallon mix and then mix that up. And again, this is a half tablespoon, so we're going to need to put four of these in. And this is a sugar. And then the same thing with the starch. And this way you can get kind of a paste formula before you stick in there because it is a little bit harder to mix up that way. So it's almost a slurry that you're starting with. And then you would just make sure you stir that up. One way that I found even is to put it in a jar with a lid and shake it up kind of like you would in making gravy to get the lumps out and make sure it's really stirred up nicely in a slurry and then I would mix it in your gallon sprayer. Make sure it's agitated and stirred up quite a bit. And especially if you use BT, that's wettable powder, I would encourage you to do the same thing. So mixing the starch and the sugar, again, at two to two and a half tablespoons each to your gallon of water really can enhance it. Now, just like all good products, there are problems starting to arise. What we're finding in some of the research labs in North Carolina State University, they're finding that insects are starting in a lab setting, build up a tolerance or a resistance to BD products. And what that means, people who use it on a regular basis, year after year, 
their insects can build up a resistance and it's not effective. It loses its effectiveness. So in any kind of control practice like that, it's always a good thing to alternate different chemicals. There are other organics that you can use on these particular insects, as well as synthetics like seven, malathion, or thiodine, but just make sure you read the label. Now, if you want to stay away from insecticides altogether, in some garden centers, and especially mail order through catalogs, you can find mechanical barriers. This particular one is called a head cover, and you've seen us even when we visited with Mr. Gordon Graham of Edmond, he was using a floating row cover to control some of these particular pests on his cabbage by just keeping them at, at a distance through a mechanical barrier where they couldn't get in there and feed on them. And you can get floating row covers, and especially on cabbage, just cover it around, make sure you don't trap any of the insects in there. Or again, you can buy uh, head covers that are commercially sold. Again, this is for cabbage, cauliflower, and broccoli. And you're keeping them off of the heads or the part that you're going to harvest. So there are several options. Now that the harvest or the plants are starting to come along nicely, don't forget to be active in the garden. Start looking for uh, moths flying around. Look underneath the leaves for the larva. And also check for aphids and other insects at the same time because they're just around the corner to start feeding on your plants.